Whether it be facing off against hulking green monsters, giant wolves, and attractive yet deadly goddesses, Thor Ragnarok has more than enough action to keep one on the edge of their seat. There are several Easter eggs and nods to certain characters and storylines that may seem surprising. In the midst of all the commotion, it is understandable if you didn't pick up on some of them. So sit back and relax as we count down on important details that you might have missed. Don't let me down. Want to get notified when new and enticing Screen Rant content is uploaded? Hit that subscribe button to keep up with the most recent film theories and news. So, King of Asgard. Thor becomes king. Ever since Thor The Dark World was released in 2013, Thor Odinson was on a quest to find his long-lost father, Odin. After finding out that Loki was pretending to be their father for several years, he demanded his help to seek him out. I know exactly where he is. They eventually found him on Earth with the help of Doctor Strange's magic and wisdom. Curiously enough, Odin within the comics has been sent to Earth before, something longtime comic book fans may have picked up on. Unfortunately, their reunion was short-lived. Hey, 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 take it easy, man. But as Odin passed away and Thor essentially took up the mantle as King of Asgard. However, this is not the first time the eye-patched King Thor has appeared within Marvel Comics. The Thor God of Thunder storyline that was released during 2012 depicted an older yet more powerful Thor in the far future who had been King of Asgard for several thousands of years. This storyline pitted him up against the Devourer of Worlds, Galactus, who was on a mission to feed upon the long-dead planet Earth. To defeat the hungry giant, Thor had to obtain the insane power of the Necro Sword, which also has been referenced within Thor Ragnarok. Who knows? Maybe if the Fox and Marvel deal comes through, we may be able to see old King Thor face off against the mighty Galactus at some point or another. It's main event time. Planet Hulk. Although not very subtle, the inspiration for one of the locations featured within Thor Ragnarok's plot is actually from a widely popular comic book storyline known as Planet Hulk. Due to certain film rights to characters within the Fantastic Four and X-Men franchises, it would be quite complicated to have Planet Hulk on the big screen. <laughs> Sakaar is the planet that Thor found himself on after Hela got the best of him in their battle. However, after the events of Avengers Age of Ultron, Hulk's Quinjet also crash-landed on Sakaar. This led the Hulk to become the Green Scar and a celebrated gladiator within the Grand Master's Colosseum. However, one big difference is that Green Scar within the comic book story sought freedom and wanted no part of being a gladiator, while Hulk within the film actually enjoyed beating the pulp out of other gladiators for the amusement of the crowds. One may notice that the armor pieces that Green Scar War within the comic book is also very similar to that of Hulk's in the movie. Heck, even the initial fight in the Planet Hulk animated film has Hulk face off against a worthy friend and rival of Thor, that being Beta Ray Bill, who shockingly enough is also teased within the film. Oh, Thor. Wanna use a big wooden fork? Arena Champions. Remember that we mentioned Beta Ray Bill being teased within the film? Well, he is not the only character who was briefly shown. If you pay attention to the Grand Master's Tower, you will see the four faces of former champions that fought in the arena before Thor and Hulk did. Beta Ray Bill has longtime connections to not only Asgard, but also Thor as their battle led Bill to become the worthy wielder of Stormbreaker, a hammer similar to that of Mjolnir. The other faces belong to that of Ares, the Greek god of war, By Beast, a dangerous two-faced android, and the Man-Thing. These characters are not strangers to the Hulk, because he has fought against Ares and the by beasts several times. Even the Man-Thing has gotten the best of the Hulk before. The question does arise, though. Will we ever get to see these bizarre and mysterious characters on the big screen? Will Beta Ray Bill fight alongside Thor Odin's son in the battle against Thanos, the Mad Titan, in Avengers Infinity War? Will Thor get to wield the Stormbreaker after losing his iconic Mjolnir hammer? Only time will tell as to what characters will actually partake in one of Marvel's biggest films yet. Wait, wait, you're not gonna face them, are you? Yes, I am. Gore the God Butcher Gore the God Butcher is definitely not a well-known Marvel villain, but he is by far one of the most dangerous opponents that Thor had ever faced. Gore earned his title by slaying pantheons of gods across several timelines, which eventually led him to fight against and even defeat Thor. What? As we went over before, Thor's status as king and appearance were inspired by the storyline depicted in Thor God of Thunder. When the eye patch wearing old King Thor had to protect the Earth from the clutches of Galactus, he discovered the power of the Necro Sword. The Necro Sword gives the user the ability to create a wide array of weapons and even armor. Hela is seen crafting swords, blades, and other sorts of weaponry when she fights against the Asgardian army, Thor, and even Surtor at the end of the film. When Gore finds himself fighting against Thors from several timelines, 
designs, he showcases the same abilities that Hela did as well. Additionally, Thor Ragnarok's producer Brad Winderbaum revealed that Gore was definitely an inspiration for Kate Blanchett's portrayal of Hela in the film. Even though Gore himself wasn't in Thor Ragnarok, at least one aspect of his character was shown through Hela. What are you exactly? The Celestials. The Celestials are a mysterious yet ancient race which were teased all the way back in the 2014 film Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. When the Collector spoke about the nature and origin of the Infinity Stones, we could see a celestial being showcased. Additionally, nowhere is a mining facility which is actually the severed head of a Celestial. However, a Celestial was also teased briefly in Thor Ragnarok. When the Grandmaster is witnessing the battle between Thor and Hulk in the Gladiator Arena, one can see the costume of what seems to be a Celestial being. The the Celestials within the comic books play important roles in seeking out worthy civilizations to help them advance. Or, in the case of the Collector's flashback, seek out civilizations to destroy using the Infinity Stones. There's a little pee coming out of me right now. Although we have yet to see a living Celestial on screen, with the exception of Ego and Peter Quill in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, it is very likely that they will become involved alongside the abstract entities when they fight against Thanos in Infinity War's second part. Question is, however, will Marvel have the intention to actually show the Celestials in their true power and glory. Loki, my boy. Asgardian play. One of the most hilarious scenes throughout Thor Ragnarok is undoubtedly the play dubbed The Tragedy of Loki. In the events of Thor The Dark World, Loki fools Thor into thinking that he had sacrificed himself to save Thor's life. This death not only fooled Thor, but also the audience. Hurts, doesn't it? Loki is not called the god of mischief for nothing. Piss off, ghost! It is revealed at the end of the film that Loki was actually pretending to be Odin and left his adoptive father on Earth. This play pretend trick by Loki was soon unveiled by Thor, which jumpstarted the plot of the movie to seek out Odin. Within the play, Loki mentions how he turned Thor into a frog when they were younger. Shockingly, this is actually a nod to Throg, a frog with the powers of Thor, which debuted back in 1986. However, the best part about this scene is the actors who play the characters' parts. Loki is played by none other than Matt Damon, while Thor is played by Chris Hemsworth real-life older brother, Luke Hemsworth. Curiously enough, Sam Neill plays the part of Odin, which is coincidental because Sam's Jurassic Park co-star, Jeff Goldblum, is also in the film. Talk about a jam-packed cameo scene. Hey, man. The Warbound. Planet Hulk not only inspired the setting of Sakaar for Thor Ragnarok, but also introduced us to some members of the Warbound. Over here. Rocks waving at you. Yeah. Korg is the clear and uncontested comedic relief within the film who is inseparable from Meek, his sidekick. However, within the Planet Hulk storyline, Korg and Meek play very different roles. Hulk meets them in the Gladiator Arena alongside the rest of the Warbound. They form a sort of familiar bond after they help Hulk defeat the Silver Surfer, who was the Grand Mas <coughs> the Red King's champion in the comic book storyline. After Hulk and the Warbound obtain their freedom, they find themselves traveling to the Earth to fight the Earth's heroes alongside the Hulk. Although a World War Hulk story on the big screen seems very unlikely for now, the Marvel Cinematic Universe found a good way to introduce more than just one of Planet Hulk's elements. Those who loved the tear-jerking yet hilarious one-liners from the duo are in for a treat, as Thor Ragnarok's Taika Waititi has mentioned that a spin-off feature for those two characters has been talked about. Why, thank you. So, hopefully, this may not be the last we see of those characters. Odin's Treasure Odin's Trophies those who have seen the very first Thor film, which debuted in 2011, may remember a very brief Easter egg that hinted at the Infinity Gauntlet we will see Thanos obliterate the Avengers with this April. However, this is contradictory due to seeing Thanos equip himself with the Infinity Gauntlet in 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron end credits scene. Also, due to all the Infinity Stones being scattered. For instance, the Tesseract is, or well, was, in Asgard. The Collector has the Reality Gem. The Power Gem is on Xandar. Doctor Strange has the Time Gem. And finally, the Mind Gem is literally a part of Vision. Plus, the one in Odin's trophy room was adorned with almost all of them. However, Thor Ragnarok essentially further made it clear that the Infinity Gauntlet that is within Odin's collection is actually fake, as are many other things within it. Seeing Hela knock over the gauntlet is not only humorous, but her comment regarding the collectibles fixes a continuity error within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Talk about a retcon! Fortunately, we will see the genuine and very real Infinity Gauntlet in action on April 27th, when Infinity War releases worldwide. Let's just hope that the other stones Thanos finds are fake, for the Avengers' sake. And you are an old man and a fool! Unworthy Thor 
For those who have kept up with Marvel's recent Thor comics, one may know that Thor became unworthy and the power of Thor, alongside the Mjolnir hammer, were given to Jane Foster instead. Thor had to overcome a trial during 2011's Thor film, after his father Odin believed he was too arrogant and cocky to be worthy of such power. Although Thor was not deemed unworthy since then in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he still lost Mjolnir after Hela utterly destroyed it in front of him. While Thor wasn't as mighty without his hammer in the comics, Odin made Thor realize that Mjolnir was never his source of power, and was merely just a tool to help focus it. This allowed Thor to unleash what he was truly capable of and became far stronger than he ever thought was possible. Regardless, it is easy to see the connection that Thor lost Mjolnir in both iterations and must master his powers without the aid of the hammer. Fortunately, Thor may obtain access to another Asgardian weapon soon. Whether it be the Yarnbjorn, which Thor used in his younger days before he ever wielded Mjolnir, or Beta Ray Bill's Stormbreaker, we'll have to wait and see. We're about to jump on that ginormous spaceship. You wanna come? Thanos Spaceship. With the release of Infinity War Part 1 upon us, it's easy to get focused on how the other Marvel films are supposed to connect. However, we do see in the end credit scene of Thor Ragnarok that the spaceship the Asgardians are on has been discovered by Thanos' humongous ship. Additionally, the Infinity War trailer has revealed to us that at some point in the film, Thor will be drifting in space only to be found by the Guardians of the Galaxy. This possibly means that Thanos will have destroyed Thor's ship and will continue on his quest to reach the Earth. We also know that the Hulk will crash land on Earth and will find fight alongside the Winter Soldier, who you might have seen in the end credit scene of February's Black Panther release. Ever since 2011, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has teased the Infinity Stones and Thanos. The majority of that is mostly due to Asgard and Loki's schemes. It's only natural that Thor Ragnarok teased what will more than likely be the opening sequence in Infinity War. If you missed Thanos' ship at the end sequence, don't worry, it'll be very hard to miss it on April 27th. Well, you're not wrong. Which of these details did you catch on to? Were there any in particular that surprised you? Are there any other details we might have missed? Please let us know in the comment section down below, and subscribe to be up to date with the latest news and entertainment. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more awesome videos like this one. Thanks for watching.